Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today, in celebration of all things Shark Week, I'm biting in to some Wireshark. Now, Wireshark is a very powerful and popular network analyzer for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's a tool that is used to inspect data passing through a network interface, be it your Ethernet, LAN, or even wireless radio. These series of data are considered frames, of which include packets. Wireshark has the ability to capture all of those fishy little packets that are sent and received over your network, and it can decode them for analysis. When you do anything on the internet, like browse to different websites, use chat, IRC, transfer files, what have you, the data is always converted into these packets when it passes through your network interface or your LAN card. Wireshark will hunt for those packets in the TCP IP layer during transmission and keep whatever it finds. It's important to keep Wireshark in mind if you're a network admin who needs to double check that all of your customers' sensitive data is being transmitted securely. Very, very important. On the other hand, you might want to watch out for those sharks that are using this tool on open networks or your company's computers and steer clear of plain text protocols like HTTP, also very important. Consider using HTTPS everywhere. I mean everywhere, like no matter where you go on the internet, so use HTTPS, very important, or encapsulating your packets in a secure SSH or VPN tunnel. They're like shark cages for the internet. After the break, let's boot up Wireshark and we'll see how it works. We're back. Now, I already downloaded Wireshark and I gotta open it up in Linux, so I type in gk sudo Wireshark, press enter, type in my password, and it opens up Wireshark. So sudo, gk sudo Wireshark in terminal basically means sudo for graphical applications. Wireshark in this example. Now I've already installed Wireshark, I've started the application. Under the capture sec section, right down here, capture, you'll see you can choose that the, the device that you want to sniff. At the top of the application is a button called Capture Options, where you can customize all your different captures. And this looks like the little icon right here. Show the capture options. Ta-da! This, now if you go back under Interface List right here, you'll see that one of your devices is actually sending and receiving packets. You can double click on interface list and it'll pull up a nice little list showing when actual packets are going in and out. Now, I'm gonna jump on my browser just to test out where packets are going and what they're doing. So I'm gonna click on my blog and then go back over here and okay, so I can see that WLAN zero is my general, um, my interface that is being used most often. So I'll click on that one. That's your active one. Over here, you can click on options and you can customize stuff to your liking. If you click on it, you'll see different options such as capture packets in promiscuous mode or capture in monitor mode. You can also do display options like update a list of packets in real time, which is, for my example, necessary. So I, after I choose all of my options, I click on start, and it should start capturing all the different packets that, they're, that are going on in this interface. Wireshark is going to take you now to a new pane that'll show you all the packets that are being captured by Wireshark. To gather some of the data, we're going to fire up our web browser, which I've already done, and I'm gonna swim on over to sharkweek.com. Let's see what happens when I go over there. Sharkweek.com. Okay. So I got this going. I'm gonna go ahead and pause that. Let's pause that. Don't want too much going on. There we go. Okay, so we can see tons of packets being transmitted right now. So I'm going to click on stop. Stop running the live capture because we have plenty of information in here that we can look at. You can scroll through this really long list of packets and you can find something that looks interesting. There's a lot of info here, so let's start with the columns. The first column on the very far left over here, number, 
is obviously the packet number. The second one is how many seconds it has been since the start of the capture. So time right here, formatted as specified. And then the third column is the source IP address. The fourth column shows you where the packet will be sent, the destination IP address. And the fifth column is the protocol that sent the packet. This can be DNS for domain name servers, TCP for transmission control protocol, or HTTP for browsing, for example. The last column will show you a little bit more information about what's going on during this whole packet capture. Now, since we have a whole bunch of data collected, we'll want to filter it. So let's look at just the HTTP request. To do so, go up here to this little filter bar, and you type in HTTP dot request. And you can just press Enter once you find it. There we go. And now we have a nice long list of all HTTP packets of interest. And we can right click on one that you want to choose, and you can select Follow TCP Stream. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to find one that I like. This one at the top looks good. Convergent, Shark Week, HTML, blah, 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 blah. Who knows what all that means? So I click on it, and I get even more awesome information. It, you get all the raw contents. So here we can see what I sent in pink and Discovery's response in blue. Kind of interesting. You can see I am looking for discovery.com. And then it redirects me, moved permanently, to discovery.com slash tv slash sharkweek. Ha! Huh. Very cool. Now, did you guys catch a lot of packets today using Wireshark? Tell me about it in the comments or email me tips at hack5.org. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolust. Watch out for the sharks. <laughs>